scooching my way to the team. There we go. Now we get it. Now I'm in there. Round for reviews. Let's get it. Three, two, four, four. Hey everyone, I'm Mike. Nick. It's Rapid Reviews time. Enough of the introductions. Get to the games. Get to the games. It's all games we played in the month of May. I know. We're doing it in June, but it's for May. That's it's how it gets confusing. weird. We're burning time, Nick. We are. So we're going through all the games we played in May. Reviewing every one of them. Talking about every single one. What we liked. Talking mostly about. liked all of it. Uh, and then, how many games total this time, Mikey? Oh, God. 32. Oh, I, I think 32. Never mind. I lied. Don't worry. We're out of time. Spoiler. 33 different games. <laughs> Six of them were newer, newish. 53 total plays. Okay, okay, that's the that's the stats. But what games? What 33? Let's go ahead and just get into Let's them. Jump First of all, we it. played the crew. I know you're probably you know tired. This. There's some we kind of skipped through a little bit because the crew. The crew. We've been playing every single month because it's great. It's the 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 pinnacle of trick taking. It's trick taking for people who love trick taking and you want to trick take to the next trick level. Take co Cooperatively, trick take with the crew. It's a maze balls. Best game of 2020. It's okay, it's not a 2020 game, but it's uh, Tom it's, said it was. Uh, Tom said it was. 22 is. I don't care. Tom says Tom's not the the arbiter. Of Peace. Fine. Number two, this is a game that was old and now is back new yes. again to us via the Nintendo Switch. It's a digital version of the Dresden Files card game. But it is the board game, so we decided to count it because this is a game that yeah. we got, we actually back to some Kickstarter, yeah. liked the game, but it's a game you have to reset a lot. It just took too long and we ended up never playing it. We actually ended up giving it away last year and yes. during our big giveaway it's stream. It's actually very difficult. It's very brutal. It's a and it was very a little difficult too game. brutal physically, but in the digital, you can play just a hair quicker and do the, you don't have to do the setups. Yes, and it's. And it makes all the difference. We heard it's coming out on Switch. We're like definitely getting that because yeah. I think it's going to be perfect in digital yeah. form. It turns out it is. It's great. It's really good. It's really fantastic. Um, it's still very hard. It's still very I hard, but it's really fun. I think it's on Steam. Of time. Uh, I think it's I on think so, everything yes. basically at this point. It's really, really fun. If you want to try it, it's a really, really good uh, game. It's very fun. We also played Crown of Emera. Crown of Amara. We played this last week. We had a, we, for once had a tiny bit of time on our said, in our day. We never have time games. to just play games. And we're just playing games. We played Crown of Amara, yeah. um, which is quickly climbing the ranks. This is a Euro game where you have two separate parts of the game. You have like the like, city. Even for a Euro game, you're like, that's a Euro It's game. dry. There's uh, theme. Uh, there's a so city good. part of it and like a countryside. And you have a little counselor. And, and you're basically going around. Yeah, two little rondelles. Things. You're playing cards in a little area. And then you get to... Um, Depending on where you play, you get to move a certain amount. You have to move one of your counselors, and essentially on the countryside side, you're getting Resources. you're getting wheat, you're getting pants. bread, pants, you're getting stone and wood, and then you're using those on the city side to turn them in basically for points. Yeah, more or less. you can get these cards that'll give you some points and maybe some powers. You can turn them in to get. And there's two tracks. There's yes, a citizen which is super cool. tile or citizen track, and then like your building, and your score is the lower of the two. Yeah. So you got to make sure that you're building both up. So you're trying to make them so as good. even as possible, and it's. Yeah. Really tight game, like it's really, ace. really tight game. Because you play these six quick rounds and like resources are it's, tough. It's fast. tight. Yeah, it's, it's really tight. good. It's like climbing the race for me, where I'm literally like, if I play it more, I'll have to see. But like, it's potential top ten for me. Yeah. Crown of Tomorrow. I like it that much. That's awesome. We also played and got Isle of Cats, which Ooh, was decided yeah. by our patrons. Thanks, patrons. Thank you, patrons, for choosing what game we bought. Uh, Isle of Cats is absolutely incredible. Uh, I can't remember if it snuck into the end of last month or if this is the first month, but either way, it's a great game. It's polyominal cats, uh, and you're putting them onto a ship, and there's this drafting of cards that will change what you're trying to go for, maybe mid-game. They'll you'll try to maximize, maybe there's certain things that you'll lose points, but now you'll gain points if you leave them uncovered. So yeah. now it's going to change everything that you do, and it's real good with the card it's drafting really and then the, the polyominal placement. There's a lot to like in yeah. Cats. It's got a great solo as well, which I'm yes. going to do a You Can Solo that on. Yeah, next week, so, I believe. Hey. Yeah. Yep. So, so uh, Isle of Cats is... It is very, time. very fun. I, I like Isle of Cats a lot. I it's really do. Hot. The first time I played it, I was kind of unsure about it. And the more I played it, I'm like, oh, oh, I really so like good. it a lot. I, I was really not like unsure. It. Mike was. You were way more set on it right off the bat. It's really um, good. Sanctum is a game by CGE. This game is like Diablo. It looks like Diablo. Yeah. And this the is kind Euro of a, a Euro. Yeah, it's like it's like a dungeon crawl. If dungeon crawl was a Euro game, uh, that's kind of what this designer does. They also did yeah. um, adrenaline and stuff. Yeah, Philip Nedic. Yeah, and it's really really fun. I like it a lot. I've actually played it like three or four times because I've been you playing with lot. my yeah. I've been playing with my roommate and he really likes it a lot. But basically, everyone takes a character. Those characters have certain skills. And then you have your body, which you can put like different items on, like armor and weapons and helmets weapons. and boots. And essentially, you're you're climbing your way up to the sanctum where the big like Balrog demon thing is up there. 
and you're fighting other demons on the way, and those demons on the other side, once you beat them, are items, and then you can equip those items, so and you're cool. essentially trying to gear up for the final fight, and the final fight is really brutal, like really, really yeah. brutal, it's so hard. to the point where there's like a winning condition if no one beats the, mm -hmm. because there's a chance that no one will beat the final d demon. When we played thing. that happen, we didn't yeah. make it. And it's really hard, really fun. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a Euro game. You're just minimizing and maximizing your skills, trying to get things unlocked, trying to get good items, and then just trying to survive it's, the last gauntlet. Yeah, it's just chucking those dice, fighting stuff, the, the monsters you kill turn into loot like Diablo and yeah. stuff. It's just really fun. It all comes down to dice manipulation, but it has a very Amerithrashy type theming on it. Um, so it really works kind of for everybody, I yeah, feel like. I like it a lot. It's real excellent. Really fun. That's Sanctum. Uh, we also played Architects of the West Kingdom with the Age of Artisans expansion yeah. specifically, which is, the chef kisses us real good. It's, it's, really it's does so much with so little. Yeah. Basically, all it adds is a little overlay for the guild hall where you put your architects yeah. that you build and they, you lose those workers for good. It gives you an architect, which is a special worker, and it gives you some cards that are multi-use. You can either use them to attach to a building, which is an adornment, or you can make tools that go onto your town spoke to make your town spoke a little more powerful. Yeah. That's all That's it, it adds. And it's great. Yeah. It adds just a little bit of a twisted lip that I want to reinfuse the game, give a couple extra options, but it's minimal. Yeah. Pretty the, minimal. The, what you're doing in the game does not change. No. So it's not an essential yeah. expansion, but in for that very reason, I really like it. Well, it's nice because we I did a minute a minute about uh, this, which will pop above my head, kind of talking about like, it's an expansion that you just leave in. Oh, you yeah. know, it's like no, it's not an expansion where you're like, ooh, this really changes things. So I'm gonna like take it out because sometimes I don't always want to want that. This is an expansion you always just leave that. in there. You're just right. like, yeah, cool. Now we just I would teach play it to like new this. players because it's a minimal thing to add yeah. on. It's, it's one of those leave-in expansions, it's pretty darn good. So good. I'll let you talk about this one because I have not played this yet. Even better than Architects of the West Kingdom is Viscounts of the West Kingdom. I mean, I've really enjoyed the two plays I had. I played it um, both on Tabletopia. It it's on Tabletopia now. Check I'm it out. Great back I played a two-player game of it, then I soloed it. Viscounts of the West Kingdom is the third in the West Kingdom kind of trilogy now. Yeah. Completely different from Architects of the West Kingdom and Paladins of the West Kingdom. Now you're on this circular board and you have your little Viscount who is going in a clockwise motion around the board via these paths. And it's sort of a slow motion deck builder. Because you have this little tableau of three cards, eventually once you get underway a little bit, of three cards in front of you. And every turn, one of the three cards, you're gonna shift everything to the right. So one of the cards is gonna go away, and you're gonna add a new card to your tableau. Mm -hmm. So you have this sort of, you know, you're building out a hand of cards, but they're gonna be out for multiple turns. Yeah. So it's sort of, trying to get the right icons in front of you at the right time, because each of these little townsfolk will come with icons and stuff like that. And depending on what icons you have, you're going to do one of four actions on your turn. You're either gonna trade some stuff, build some buildings, put some people on a castle, or transcribe uh, manuscripts. And those are the four kind of avenues for scoring, and kind of like Paladins, it's probably good to focus in one or two of the areas, not necessarily all four. Yeah. But there's a lot to explore, and it feels more, Streamline maybe than like Paladins of the West Kingdom, which is like mm -hmm. probably the beefiest of them all. I'm gonna do a video um, coming up here that kind of goes into all three of them and, and how they compare and contrast. Um, and I just, I really enjoy it, man. I really want you to try it because there's just those four actions and the card you put down dictates how far your Viscount moves. And based on that, you're either gonna do stuff on one, the either inner circle to do two actions or the outer circle to do the other two. It's really good. I really, really enjoyed it. I lost both times I played. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so my mastery of the West Kingdom trilogy continues to elude me. <laughs> elude But it's really good. Viscounts, I'm really excited to yeah, get, you're, it, you're to get really it physically it. to try. Yeah, you're really, really into it. <sighs> oh, we played Baseball Highlights 2045, which is one of our favorite two-player games, one of our favorite it's deck so builders. It's so, so good. This is a game where you are, uh, you each take a baseball team, you're essentially playing baseball, yeah. where you have a hand of six cards, but it's set in the future. So those cards are naturals, which is like normal people, but then they also have cyborgs robots. and cyborgs. robots playing. Yeah. And the cyborgs pitch super fast, the robots hit super hard, and it's just this really cool world where you're playing out a card, most cards will have a defensive action, and then mm -hmm. a, a thing that that card is threatening. So it'll be like they, catch for an out or like throw someone out at second play at second base and then I'm threatening like a home run and then Mike then has to play a card that deals with what I'm threatening and then threatens their own thing so you're yeah. constantly playing this back and forth of threatening your own stuff yep. and 
dealing with what your opponent is threatening. And it's this really weird balance that like, is really it plays unlike any other game I've ever played in terms of that. It's very, very, it's very tactical in that like, it comes down to like acceptable losses. You're yes. like, you know what, you're, you're gonna hit two, two singles. Just I'm gonna let you have Just that and I'm gonna play this and hopefully you don't have a defensive card to deal with that. Exactly. Can I, can I give up some runs for the sake of making up more runs? I mean, there's a lot to uh, yeah. focus on with that. It's very, very directly um, dealing with your opponent. Yeah, I mean, it is heads very, up very in the tactical. best way. And it's nice because each game, you're only playing six cards. That's the full game. So it's a bunch of little mini games. And after each yeah. game, you can draft a free agent. The free agent are much better cards. Yeah. But the nice thing is, is whenever you draft a free agent, you have to take someone in your team and send them down yeah, to the minors. So your deck never gets any bigger. It's always the same size. It just gets better. Plus yeah. the person you bought you goes right on top of your deck. So you'll yeah. get the next game. So the other player knows you have that it's, card. It's all mine. So then games. it's like, when are they gonna play it when are they gonna play it? and it, it's just it's so incredible it's really good even if you don't like baseball but if you like baseball it's even better yeah uh it's really good uh we love baseball highlights 2045 it's incredible it's so good i got a chance to play horrified which i yeah. continue to just be charmed by i still haven't yeah. tried out all the monsters um i played this time against the mummy and uh dracula which was interesting because they both needed the same colors but in the opposite way mm. dracula needed a lot of these red items because you're going around town picking up it's kind of pick them and deliver really it really is you're picking up these item tokens of red blue or yellow and you have to take them to the right place to use them as kind of tools and things so for the mummy you can go to the museum and turn in yellow to move these little scarabs around it's like a little mini puzzle and you're trying to get the right numbered scarabs into the right spaces uh, and with uh, Dracula, you're trying to go to these four different locations around the board to smash coffins using these red items. And then both to defeat them finally, you had to use the opposite. So Dracula finally needed yellow to be defeated. The mummy finally needed red to be defeated. Blue was sort of just, there. just uh, for, there for us to take hits and stuff, but it was super duper fun. Uh, Horrified is a great cooperative it's a game. Good little game. It uses popular good. IPs in a great way where you have these famous movie monsters that each need to be defeated in a different way. Like Horrified is really, I'm so glad it exists because it's going to help this hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we would talk a lot about it's that. Great games are going to help yeah. the hobby. Horrified is ace. It's fun. It's easy. Love it. Yeah. So Horrified. Got Horrified's to great. Play that again. Play, yeah. Gotta try the other monsters still. Yeah, we played a little Blue Lagoon. Blue Lagoon yeah. is a Reiner Knizia game by Blue Orange Games. Really, really pretty game. Not really much of a theme because it's Reiner Knizia. But basically, it's a game where you are um, populating your Polynesian people and you're heading around. You see these uh, these kind of abandoned, empty islands that have a lot of like natural resources on them. And essentially, what you're doing is you're exploring the islands. Yep. The game takes place over like two phases. You have these little, these little chits and you're essentially putting them out in order and you're kind of like branching out on these islands, yeah. kind of trying to gain area control, trying to gain resources. The more resources you have, the more points you get, all this kind of stuff. And then once each person's out of their little tokens, you score and the first half of the game is over and all of your tokens come off. But you were able to put down behind. these little building settlements and the game takes place again and now you are then... Even you're then populating the islands, I guess is what kind of it is. Re-exploring from re your settlements this yeah. time. But now you have to go from your settlements, whereas before you kind of were able to go wherever you want. And and despite this like that has a tiny little change, it really does make the game feel pretty darn different yeah, oh yeah. between the two phases, even though they work very, very similarly. And it's very simple, very fast, very pretty thinky little abstract game that is really, really fun. And every single time I play it, I'm reminded how much I like that game. It's good, especially two players, it's incredibly fast. Yes, it's, it's really very it's like fast. 20 minutes tops. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're just trying to get all these different avenues for scoring in, in a very simple abstract way, and it's beautiful to boot. That's blue. Hard to beat Blue Lagoon. Lagoon. We also played the Castles of Burgundy, speaking of not, beautiful games. Not beautiful. Yeah. I disagree, I like the look of it. But it's a classic, the classic Steffenfeld game, one of the most classic games of all time. It's all about rolling dice and mitigating those dice um, and to build out an estate with different tiles that will all do different things and score differently for you. Animals will get points for however many matching animals you have all touching. So if the more sheep I put together in a big group, the more points I get. Uh, there's building tiles and they give you other tiles. Yeah. They might score you points in this way or there's ships that will give you turn so priority much. and then you can get points that way. There's a billion different ways to get points. They're all great. Castle Burgundy is a classic. What else we got? Boom. Detective Club. This is um, at least my personal favorite social deduction game at this point. Play with my roommates. It's right up there. Uh, it's really, really fun. This is a game where um, there's one person who's like the lead investigator or whatever they're called. 
Um, and everyone has a set, uh, has like six of these kind of like Dixit kind of cards, which are like Dream really cards, beautiful, cool. super weird, trippy art on them. Really, really cool. And basically the person who's the leader puts out, looks at their cards, chooses one card, puts it out, um, and has a clue in mind. So like, there's a whole bunch of weird stuff. Maybe there's a little teapot in the corner. So you put like, so then you're like, okay, the clue is going to be T. And so... You then, on these little pads of paper, write down T on all but one of the pads of paper. Yeah. And then you shuffle those up and distribute it to everyone. So everyone gets to see what the clue is. Everyone but one. Except for one person. Then everyone chooses one from their thing, and then they all put one out. And they go, okay, cool. Now everyone has one out, and you want to put one out that pertains to the clue. Yep. And then the, then the leader, again, puts out a second card that pertains to the clue. Then everyone puts out a second card. So there's one person who doesn't know the clue, so they're kind of just looking at everyone's cards, trying to figure out what the clue is. But here's the catch. Then the person who's the leader says what the clue was. Okay, the clue was T. And then everyone has to explain why they played this those cards. This is why this is clearly T. So if you're the traitor, you know what the clue is at this point, plus all the cards are super weird and trippy. So a lot of times, like, I'll have a card, Michael say T, I look at cards, I'm like, None of my cards have anything to do with that. Like legitimately. So it's it's much easier to hide. And yeah. because you know the clue, you can BS way easier. Yeah. And it's it's incredible. It's so, so good. Burn all copies of every other social deduction. Just game. keep Detective Club. Charger Stone. I've been going through my campaign with people been. every Sunday night with my friends digitally on the digital version of Charter Stone. Uh it's super good. I'm I'm gonna win a game eventually. I came in second really close. It was, I thought I was gonna win and it was brutal. But uh, it's this cool worker placement legacy game that has a digital version where uh, you're building out a charter and everyone else is doing that. That'll get different buildings that'll score points and you're ultimately over the 12 games hoping to kind of be the most glorious player and be um, like loved by the ever king. Cause story and theme, but it's really good. It's cute. Um, the app is getting better and better. There's been updates and stuff, That's right. but it has been buggy for sure, but it's getting there. That's so right. Charterstone. Charterstone. I got to play Dragon Castle with some patrons. If you're one of our patrons, we play, if you're one of our patrons on Patreon, we play um, games with our patrons. Usually like once every other week we try to, and it's kind of just first come first serve. Say, hey, I'm gonna play this game, and then people come play this. So we uh, played Dragon Castle, which is a really, really great mahjong inspired uh, abstract game that's really pretty. And I got to play it with um, my patrons in this very, very simple game, very simple to explain. You're essentially just drafting tiles from a pyramid, these really like the hefty, beautiful castle. tiles. Yep. We were playing on Tabletopia, but nonetheless, they're they're very, very nice in real life. And you're dra drafting like matching tiles, and then putting them in a group on your little board. And then if you put a group of four together, they all flip over and then you get to score them. If you can put more together, they flip over and yeah, you score them the for group, more points. The and it's just a very, very simple game that is really, really good. And it's kind of one of those abstract games that kind of made a splash when it first got here because it was really fun and really pretty. It's and then kind of just disappeared. And so uh, it's a really, really great game, Dragon Castle. Check it out if you like abstract games or if you like uh, Mahjong games. Not like Mahjong, but it's inspired it's kind of got this by this cool, it, yeah. like, bird's eye view way of that you have to deal with everything. It's very, yeah, it's... very pretty, very cool, and simple. The yeah. actions are very simple. Very, very simple. Very fun game, Dragon Castle. Next, Boom. we got Tiny Towns, which um, we haven't played in a while. And I'm super into it because um, we tried a couple different buildings. We still haven't tried all the different buildings. No. It's essentially kind of a roll and write feel where um, people will call out whoever the lead builder is. That term will call out a resource and all of us must take that resource. Yeah. And you're putting it into a very limited area, a four by four grid. And then different, um, you'll put together different combinations of different colored resources mm -hmm. in the right shapes yeah. to then build actual buildings, which will score. There's cottages and there's... Uh, for all the different types of buildings, like four types for each yeah, one. Which is uh, so there's tons of variability. A lot of variability. And you each get a special monument that you can build that might give you a certain scoring or give you an ability once it's built. Um, so Tiny Towns is really fun. I continue to not be great at the game, but I really <laughs> enjoyed playing it. It is very fun. It's I like fantastic. It a lot. And if you work it the right way, you can play with an unlimited amount of people, yeah. which is cool. An infinite amount of people, which is always nice. Draftosaurus. Yeah. I actually didn't play you play Draftosaurus, yes. but I've played it many times. It's very good. It's so good. It's such a fun you have these little dinosaur meeples. Um, and you are putting them into like a little dinosaur zoo. And so different, the different enclosures all want to score differently. You want to have different combinations of dinosaurs in there. But the thing is you get a handful of dinosaurs, you get to choose one only and then pass the rest of the player to your left. And they put that dinosaur down. And so the cool thing I like about it, it's a great way to introduce the idea of drafting. Yes. It's easy to track what you need and who's where because 
they're physical meatballs. So you can mm -hmm. count four meatballs yes. and you only ever have six in a round. You literally do six dinosaurs, grab six more out of a bag, and then that's it. Done. It's a five minute game, yeah, 10 minute really game fast. with scoring and explanation, incredibly quick. It's cutesy with the little the little wooden dinosaurs. Um, I love this game. This is my go-to um, teach and play in 10, 15 yeah, minutes game. It really is. It's really becoming that game for you. It's absolutely incredible. I love Draftosaurus. Yeah, Draftosaurus is very fun. You really, really it's like so it. so freaking good. Yeah. We just played Kanagawa again. We were talking. Brutus we have Katooks. Brutus and Katooks. We have not played Kanagawa Forever. in probably a year and a half. It, it's we, we like the game. It just, we Some just dust had settled on the game. Yeah, we just, for whatever reason, almost pulled it out a bunch of times, and for so some good. reason, we just never did. Um, and so, so Draft of not Draft of uh, Kanagawa is a great game where you are a painter at a school, and essentially you are learning, uh, you're drafting cards, and the cards can either be turned into skills, so that now you can paint, like, mountainscapes, seascapes, or they can be used to build out your print, your painting. And it's really, really uh, a great game that's got a really interesting drafting mechanism where you yeah. can draft earlier but get less stuff, but you'll get the stuff you need, or you can wait for more cards sort to come out, it. but someone might take the stuff you want. It's a very, very fun uh, game and kind of set collection where you're trying to get certain things in your print where you're having more trees, you get a diploma because you painted a lot of trees. Really, really fun game, gorgeous art. And it's just, it's a good time. And again, a kind of a game that went under the radar, unfortunately. Um, and it's really, really good. And we hadn't played it in a while. And we played it again. I'm like, yeah, this game is great. This game is, is really, really good. Stupid and we could, should play it more than we did. Uh, and so, yeah, it had been a while. And so we broke it out because we've been trying to go through the games we haven't played a lot. And uh, Kenny Gow was great. So good. And so, yeah. Jump cut. Next up, we got Orleone. We played yeah. base game, base baby of Orleone on Tabletopia with the Kirby's. Ellen yeah. and Randy Kirby, competitive. We haven't played competitive Orleone in a long time. I forgot that I'm time. not that great at competitive <laughs> Orleone. <laughs> Although I play, probably put together my best game of Orleone I've ever played. You did. I did not play. Me, me and Ellen it was, both. It was good enough really for a very, well. <laughs> very solid second place. But it was very fun. Yeah. It's this kind of bag builder action selection game um, that is just really cool and... Playing the base game reminded me that it really does need trade and intrigue and or just needs to be played with the invasion expansion. The base game is totally fine, it's but I it's stuff. so elevated by those expansions yeah. that like I just don't want to play without yeah without any version of the expansion. Well, I'm glad we did play it oh, yeah. base competitive because it had been so long yes. that I was just like, to the point where it's like I was like, I don't even remember how to play this game yeah. not with invasion. And so it's still really, really fun. But yeah, yeah, it's like at least one of the expansions. It just adds so, so much to that game. It's really good though. And it was really fun playing with the Kirby's, as it always is, because they're just delightful. Oh, you know it is. What else we got? Uh next one was Patchwork Doodle. We actually played this very quickly with our uh our Twitch audience. We we yeah. are had a little bit of extra time. We finished our game that we were playing a little bit early, and we were like, we have a half hour. Let's play a quick roll and write. And so we broke out Patchwork Doodle, taught it real quick because you can teach that game in about two, three minutes, and then played it. It's a, it's a roll and write version of Patchwork Yep, that works pretty darn well. It feels kind of patchworky, and the drafting of the of the shapes is pretty cool, and you're just filling in polyominal shapes with little, with little colored pencils. It's actually really, really fun. I, I like Patchwork Beauty Doodle a simplicity. lot. Beauty and simplicity. Yeah, as like a quick little roll and write that you just pull out, like one that's like, you know, not like your welcome twos that it kind of get a little bit heavier. You know, none of that. It's just quick, fast, easy. You can teach it to everyone. Everyone kind of just enjoys it because it's just putting shapes together. It's very, very easy um, in terms of it's, it goes over well. And it's just, it's fun. I like Patrick. I like Patrick Doodle way more than I was really expecting to. Yeah, and it's at this point gets played probably the most out of our rolling rights just because it is so quick to play. Yeah. Um, it's fantastic. Next up, we got to play a new game that was um, given to us, uh, uh, to borrow a loan yeah. to us by one of our followers who turned in their Twitch points. And we played Quad Heroes, yeah. which we first saw last summer at Gen Con. Yeah. We were punching it out uh, for the Board Game Geek uh, Hot Games Room. Hot area. And we were punching it out with Danny, and, uh, and then we spilled soda all over it. We cleaned it up, and then people, I imagine, played all week during Gen Con. Hopefully it was fine. This one had less soda stickiness to it, but we finally got to play Quad Heroes. We have these weird, weird little dice looking people. There's these cube people that yeah. you um, are running around on a map to do various different scenarios. And yes. you can play this game one versus all, co-op. You can play racing scenarios. You can play competitive, competitive yeah. battle scenarios. There's a million and one, and there's just 
this is like one of those like Kickstarter games. There's just tiles and tiles and things and yeah. icons, and it's really a lot. I really enjoyed the play. Yes. I understand how this game would have trouble ever blowing up. Yes. Because it's just a lot of stuff. Yeah. And you have to sort through that. It's a bit much. Once you do, it's great. Sure. But it's like, it is one of those kind of It's games. the same reason why we don't play Mechs vs. Minions more often. Yeah. It's just a lot of work. Yes. It's to just, get it's a it big, played. same Gloomhaven or something like that. It's like, man, you got to pull a lot of stuff out. Yeah. It is very, very fun, and the way you you move around the board and like the actions you get to take depend on what part of your little cube body is facing upwards. So you can kind of like roll onto your back, and now your face is facing it's upwards, and that gives you a different action. The yeah, next turn you roll onto your head, so now your feet are. It's like it's very, very interesting mechanic that works really well, and it was yeah. it was fun. But it was I will say it was tough to kind of get it going because yeah. it was just it was just kind of confusing, honestly. But it, the yeah. game itself was really solid. I want to um, play it again before yeah. we before we return it to sender to the sender. Um, Thank you again, Quicksand, for yeah, the, for the game because it was very very fun. Very cool. Um, and and, and such cool little I don't know what those cubes minis, are I guess. like yeah. really it's a high um, production, production value yeah. game. Super cool. Yeah, really um, fun. Man. I got a chance to play Imperial Settlers Roll and Write a couple times on my phone because there's an Imperial Settlers Roll and Write app now, yeah, which actually game. works super cool because it kind of works like a campaign. Um, the cool thing about Roll and Write, and it's also the game, the board game, is also kind of a bummer, is if you play co co or um, with multiple people, it, the game's always the same. Yeah. But if you solo it, there's all these different sheets that are different sets of buildings. Yeah. So there's like a whole solo campaign, but you can only do that if you're soloing it, which is bull crap. I hate that. So I laminated all of them so we could just pass them out if we wanted, but the app does a really cool thing with this where you get just the base buildings to start and then as you play games of it depending on your score you get crowns yeah and then you can turn in those crowns to unlock different sets of buildings a la the solo campaign and that makes it kind of like candy crush yeah. now we keep playing it <laughs> because i want to like get enough crowns to unlock the next set to get new buildings and see how those buildings work and i was like yo that is real smart yeah it's real good get that app if you like rolling right Imperial Settlers rolling right. The app is really cool. So yeah. now I'm like, why did I laminate all that stuff? If I'd known it was coming digitally, I would have just waited. Now it's laminated. But though. it's fine. It's still really fun. I've been enjoying playing it on the app digital style. What's yeah. next? Yeah. Uh, next up is Role Player. We played yeah. uh, on this on Tabletopia with our good friend Crook. Um, and Role Player is a game where you are, it's the most meta game ever. You are rolling out a D&D &D character or a D&D &D type character. Nerd! Nerds! And that's the game. It says you're rolling out uh, dice and you're assigning those dice to different to different attributes in your strength, wisdom, integrity, constitution, uh, integrity, intelligence. Um, yeah, charisma, charisma, uh, constitution, wisdom, all that stuff. And so you're you're essentially putting them out in here and trying to get certain values. So if you're like an orc, you want to have a certain amount of strength or something like that. Yep. And you have a uh, a class. You can be like a paladin or a cleric. You have an alignment. You have a backstory. All this kind all of cool of stuff, stuff that essentially breaks down to you just want to put certain values or certain color dice in certain spots, or you want this little cube on this little card to be in a certain area. And it's a game that's ultimately relatively abstracted in terms of at least the base game, particularly in terms of like what you do. You're just mm -hmm. mostly putting dice in a little spot. Or dice but allocation, everything yeah. in the game is like thought out to be thematic in the D&D universe. Like, yeah. oh, this is your backstory. It actually has a whole backstory written out. And every little thing, like your alignment, you want the little cube here because you're like chaotic evil and all. It's just so, so, so thematic. And every, just the littlest little thing is just so well thought out. And it's, every time I play, it's so much fun. I really, really like role player. It's great. I also love that universe. Like Cartographers is in that same yeah. universe. Lockup's in that universe. It's like now a role player adventure coming out. And it's just all this stuff. I really, really love that whole world, that whole universe. It's just great. Next up, we got Blood Rage, which again, I played digitally. I played a lot of digital um, versions of games and then stuff on Tabletopia as well. But Blood Rage came out as a digital um, app uh, on Steam. And um, I got it because I was like, you know what? Blood Rage 
I, I have you a know, weird you relationship have weird with history it. With brothers, yeah. I'm horrible at it generally because I don't play it very often, and it's a tough game and it's a competitive game where um, there's a lot of like trickery. Where I get all this, all these people and all the strength, and they go into a, pl a place, and someone plays a card because you, every time you're battling, as you're trying to pillage something, you battle, and then uh, they might play something. It's like, oh yeah, all those warriors. They're dead. And I was like, oh! And I always get played like that yeah. because I don't have the familiarity with the cards. And so it makes me hate the game a little bit. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get the app, play digital, kind of like with Dresden Files. I'm like, maybe it'll be better in an app form. I can practice, I can get familiar with the cards, and if nothing else, it's not so long to set up and all that jazz, and I can play the game quicker against AIs. And so far, I've really enjoyed that, and I'm still pretty bad at it. I crushed the opponents, but I played against four, Easy AIs. Boom. So uh, Blood Rage is a game that I enjoy generally, but I'm so bad at it. It's one of those ones that's gotten in the way of me loving the game. Yeah, I'm just I like, I don't love it because it's not my style of game and I'm bad at it and I get crushed every time. But maybe the app will help, we'll see. TBD on I have that. those, I have those. TBD. Oh, let's play King Domino Duel. This is a two player roll and write version of King Domino. Now there's a, we'll sometimes get questions about, you've seen almost all the reviews here have been positive. We generally like most games. Most, Cause these are games we own. Indeed, for the most part. We, we're not going out much right now. We're still on lockdown. So oh. it's like, we, we're only playing stuff we have for the most part. But nonetheless, sometimes people ask like, what's a game you had high hopes for and kind of let you down? And this is one of the examples of King the Domino Duel. The hopes were. Here, because we love King Domino, we love Bruno Catala, we love roll and rights, and we love two player games. So we're like, wait, they're making a King Domino roll and rights specifically for two people? It seemed perfectly tailor made for us. <laughs> and the game, here's the thing, is really good. It's fine. We like it a lot. Yeah. It's 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 fine, but like we are expectations were in the stratosphere. And when we it played it, it here, it is a good roll and right. It's a good roll and right. I like it a lot. It's but it's cool like, that it's a two player roll we and right. We were just like, this is gonna change the world. And it didn't. It's it's yeah. a good roll and right. And so the problem is now that we've we were we've distanced ourselves from those feelings, now I just enjoy the game straight yeah. up. We played it's the helped. other day, it was fun. I crushed Nick. Just want to put it out I there. I didn't pay enough attention to what was going on because it is a two player game, and so you can tacti tactically didn't win. Play with your opponent. So there's a snake draft mechanic with these dice that you'll end up with two dice which make your domino and it plays out like King Domino from there. But there's these little spells you can get that are one-time powers and it's a little bit of a race to get to those spells because only one person will get them. You can only use them once. So that's kind of a cool thing. And I, I agree. I appreciate the game more now that I kind of have returned my expectations to Earth. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, so yeah. There's really that. fun the game though. But yeah, it was this was one of the biggest like, oh. Oh. That we ever had. It really was. But I do like the game, ultimately. Really? I was going to love that. You played King Domino the Court. Which I did. Is the, the print and play, right? The print and play expansion for King Domino, um, which will give you these little tiles, or uh, I cut them out you know, on paper and laminated them Yeah. because uh, I had time on my hands. Um, and the cool thing is, is if you get a King Domino tile that does not have a crown on it, you will put a tile representing a type of resource that that tile would produce. So the little yellow areas will produce wheat, or the forest will produce wood, or water will produce fish. And then you can then use those tiles to um, get these uh, these little square tiles that will be um, kind of members of the court, which will you'll put down onto uh, one of your little halves of a domino, which might want certain things surrounding it to score these points. Or you're gonna put it down and it's gonna create a crown now in this area, so you can make this area more valuable mm -hmm. for you. And so that's all it really is, is you can turn in these resources that your tiles now produce to get these other little tiles to put down, oh, kind of overlay on top of things. And it just opens up cool opportunities and it makes King Domino a bit thinkier, a bit more puzzly, uh, but like without doing a ton of stuff. Yeah. I really enjoyed it a lot and I really want to play it again and show you um, and see what you think because yeah, I really want it made it a bigger, punchier game. It brought the weight closer to a Queen Domino yeah. level than King Domino without being too crazy. Yeah. So it's a kind of nice middle between King and Queen Domino. Sweet, so sweet. Uh, someone else on their, our Twitch turned in their channel points to pick the game we played, and they picked Shakespeare, which we Ooh, played uh, last week, uh, actually. Backstage expansion. Ooh, Shakespeare's a good game. It is great. Mike also won that. He did very, very good in that one. Um, it's, indeed. Um, Shakespeare's a game where you're putting on a play. It's a very, very tight Euro game. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best parts is you are bidding for actions. So you can do a total of five actions if you want to, and you'll bid how many you do. The person who bids the least amount of actions gets to go first. In this game, getting to go first is a big deal. 
because there's a very, very limited amount of supplies set for pieces, set pieces, costumes, for costumes, for um, characters. characters. Yeah, It's all very, very limited. So getting to go first and having first whack, especially later in the game, first crack at like costumes or set pieces is really, really huge. So you want to bid less, but then you also can do less stuff. And yep. so it's this constant battle between those two. Where's the balance point? And then we add the backstage expansion, which is really nice because it means the ones you don't bid for the main game, you then get to use in the backstage. So now it makes using less in the main part of the game more viable and uh, more palatable than... It just gives you more to think about. Yeah, and it's really, really great. Watch our top 10 essential expansions. Spoiler. Backstage is number one, but you can watch the rest of it and look at our pretty faces some more. Check it out up there. Uh, we also, in our quest to play some games that have collected a bit of dust recently, like Kanagawa, we played Small World for the first time in a good long and while. And it's great! It's a great game! It's so enjoyable. It's a fun little area control game where you basically have a mix of a race with a power, and those will be randomized. So you have orcs that now are wealthy, fly. or yeah. they can fly, and they don't move the same way they do. And you'll get a certain stack of these, uh, whatever race you are, orcs or hobbits or whatever, halflings I guess, uh, TM. Uh, TM, TM, TM. Um, and you're going to be putting them out onto the board, trying to control as much of the board as possible. At the end of your turn, based on how many uh, spaces you control and certain other things based on your race or power, you'll get points. Um, and that's all you do in the game, but the cool thing is there'll be a point mid-game where you'll sort of spread out as far as you can. You've taken that race about as far as they can go. Yeah. And now it's time to take that that race and put them into decline and get a new group of people to repopulate the map with. Because uh, you're, so you're kind of always spreading out and getting wiped out and spreading out again and getting wiped out by your opponents. And it's just super fun while not getting too complicated. You can get bogged um, down. Uh, and it's just great at all player counts because each player count comes with its own map that is specifically scaled for that player count. So it makes it easy to switch yeah. it up. Um, and it'll change how many rounds you play a little bit. Small World is great. I forgot that it's really fantastic. It's really, really great. That's it is really, really great. Uh, you, Mikey, played a bit of Mint Works. I believe you played this with I our played patrons. with our patrons. Yeah. We play games online with our patrons, uh, and you can too. Uh, come on down. So we played Mint Works on Tabletopia, which is fantastic. Right. It's a little kind of intro to worker placement in a way. Um, it's or a resource management game, however you want to look at it, where you have uh, mints and you'll put them onto different spaces. You might need one or two or three or however many mints to activate a certain space. And you're ultimately building a, a little neighborhood of cards. Um, so I can go to a space to get um, cards from this little display and that'll go into my hand uh, or go in front of me rather. And then I can um, pay mints in another space to actually build that building, which then goes into effect, which then will give me victory points. And once someone has seven victory points, the game will end. Whoever has the most victory points wins. So it's a really simple game in terms of there's not many different spaces to go to. And it just is a, a, a cool little way to explain kind of the concept of worker mm -hmm. placement or resource allocation uh, without having a huge yeah. sprawling With board in front of you. Display, yeah. Right. So um, Mintworks is just really cutesy and fun and it works well on Tabletopia. It does. So it does it. indeed. Next up we played is Wingspan. Wingspan. We played it every month because my roommates really like that game, so we're not going to get into it. Bird watching, tableau builder, engine builder, great game. Wonderful. Try it. It's great. With my lady, I played Stellar again, yeah. um, which is a two-player uh, kind of puzzly game where you're putting out uh, a, a tableau of celestial objects, whether it be black holes or planets or moons. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to build um, in these different rows um, different values of of cards. You're trying to put together a large group of adjacent um, celestial beings, and you're also you're always going to put a card into your tableau, your telescope, and then keep a card into your notebook. And ultimately, if I have moons out of my telescope, I need to have some moons in my notebook as well. And if I have a run of one, two, three cards that, that go in order by their number, and then I look at how many stars worth of moons I have uh, in my telescope, I'll multiply those to get my score. So it's probably good to focus on a couple of yeah. of the different celestial objects and maximize. It's a really fun, puzzly little two player game. That's Quick awesome. two. Boom, boom, boom. Jump cut. Yeah. You don't play you play you always be playing good Carcassonne. Dude, Carcassonne is a great game. It's, it's great. a fantastic gateway game. It's one that Karen quite likes, so it's one that gets played quite often. It's really good. That's true. I still lose quite often at it. I'm not good at Carcassonne. I take offense to it. I feel like I should I'm a professional board gamer, dang it. I should do, I do this. this for a job, bro. Yeah, Carcassonne is great, though. It's a tile-laying uh, game. I mean, it's kind of the, the gateway to all gateway games in many ways because it's simple. It's, it's, it's There's language independent. It's just 
Put put a tile down. Put a meep on that tile if you want. Claim a road. Build a city. Whatever you want. It's Carcassonne. It's all Carcassonne. Baby. It's all Carcassonne, baby. It's, it's so good. Carcassonne. Love it. Yeah, it's a great game. Welcome Ever to Mikey. Game. You played a lot. Welcome to as well. I did. I played with a bunch of people on on a Zoom call. Uh, yeah. Played with the Kirby's. Played with Jordan. You all just played with your own copies. Played with the with the New Myers. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I did. I played with my copy. We played the Halloween version with the trick or treats. You have ghosts and candy corns. Yeah. Um, also, the comments: candy corn or no candy corn? Uh, Team candy corn, baby. Candy corn. Team candy corn, baby. Team candy corn. Candy pumpkins. Candy what? Oh, it's all I'm best. Down, down with all of it. Uh, but played Welcome to. Uh, super fun. I haven't played it. Uh, I haven't played too Welcome recently. to. Man, um, uh, I did play like a month or two ago, but now, so it's been kind of twice in two months and a month or two ago, whenever I played it last, I had like my best game ever of it. This one I had a real bad one, real bad game, real piss poor. So there's that. <laughs> piss poor. But it's a great game. Love it. And lastly, we played the greatest game ever made, Mike. We had three submissions from patrons this month. We finally got to play the greatest game of all time. Yeah. Justin Bieber. Back yeah. stage. Yes. Someone turned in their Twitch, uh, their Twitch. They watched for quite a while. You have to watch for a while to get enough channel points to make us play a game. Uh, Quad Heroes, great. Shakespeare, great. And someone topped them all. Made us play Justin Bieber's Backstage Pass. Which is a roll and move Justin Bieber trivia game yeah. from Justin Bieber's 2010. The start of his career. 2010 Biebs. Like, t- like so 10, baby 11 Biebs. years ago Biebs. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this game was magical. We yeah. had a fantastic, fun stream of it. Yeah. Where uh, people were desperately trying to help us come up with the answers. Uh, because We played for real. They're based on like just, most of them were just based on his lyrics, which and was stuff. Thank God. We're like, that. what color shoes is he wearing in this in this music video? We're, we're like, like I wouldn't know. Uh, and so we had a stroke of genius at the end because I'm gonna spoil it for you. The whole game you're playing, trying to get backstage with Justin. Trying to. If you win, you get backstage. You know what you get? You get a Justin Bieber quote card. You do. It's a great. card with a quote of his where it inspires you. And so we made it legacy style where we read the quote, tore up that card, and then now. So only 19 only quotes. Only 19 more to go. So now we gotta play it 19 more times. Before we span before, oh, before we, we die. leave this this mortal plane, yeah. we're gonna have to play the 19 more times. Or something like that. Until we give up. So yeah. Uh but we played Justin Bieber Backstage Pass, which is a game that's lived on our shelf and annoyed people for many years now. Yeah. And just to prove that we mean it and it's in our collection for a reason, we played it. And yes. Indeed. And I would suggest going great. back, going on to Twitch and watching the playback because it's, it's real, real ridiculous. It's, it's real, real fun. ridiculous. So we played Justin Bieber Backstage Pass, and now that's in a review video. Yep. We're gonna we always say, Oh, it's great. You can tell that's absolute dog poop. Dog poop poo. It was not bad. a great game. It was real horrible. Real bad. Uh, so that's, yeah, no more naysayers about we only do positive reviews. Justin Bieber right. Backstage Pass, awful Garbage game. game. Don't play Garbage that Garbage game. game. Uh, so like Eric I said, Lang's worst. <laughs> That and Rising Sun, just garbage, man. <laughs> just can't have play Rising Sun. Uh, yeah, so that is it. Those are the 33 games we played this month. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been it's been good. We've been trying to still play new stuff, trying to play as much different stuff as possible. Again, it's if been hard can, because yeah. we're on still on lockdown, so it's like we can't get out and play new stuff very often. Yeah. But we had 53 plays total. Yeah. Um, which is pretty darn good. Not horrible. Six, Six new, new games. Or newish games, at least digital versions. Like at least digital rich. versions of games. Yeah, it's been really, really cool. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Let us know down in the comments below what games, what has been your favorite game of the last month? The month of May, what was your favorite what game you played? What the month for you? And dude, what top the what month? out? And a special thing we do in every single month in our rap reviews, we shout out the new patrons we got in the month before. So this is new patrons in the month of May. So and if you out, become yeah. a patron in June, you'll get a shout out at next month rap so reviews. Shout out to four new legends. We got Hawk Skull, Sven Erickson, uh <laughs> Dirk Master Funk. Thank you. You can choose your names on Patreon. and a uh, reason. So Dirk Master Funk, thank Dirk you Master very much. Funk, and then David Yaron. Yeah, David Yaron. And we also had five people increase their pledge last month, which, which was amazing. super, super cool and yeah, unexpected. Thank you so much for that. So thank you so much for that. So if you want a shout out, consider supporting our Patreon. Uh, it really does. It really helps it's us. It's super it helpful. We appreciate it. If you are uh, patronize us, you can help us. Um, you can help vote which top tens we play. You can help choose uh, which games we stream. Uh, you can play games with us on Tabletopia, and you can even tell us uh, what to buy each month for you, which we will then play live on the air for all of you to watch. Uh, you never have to support us financially for never. us to love you. 
um, but it helps us do bigger and better things. So we really appreciate uh, everyone's generosity continually. Thank you very much. Uh, and that's Rapid Reviews, everybody. Let us know, uh, again, like Nick said, which games really topped the month for you, which stood out, which uh, really brought May uh, some joy for you. Indeed. Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up and please share it with your friends because uh, we like doing these very quick little uh, yeah, reviews fun. for you. Yeah. So thanks so much, everybody. Uh, that's going to be it. I'm Mike. I'm Nick. And we out of here. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that uh, video. Yeah. I've done one of these with you before. Check uh, out last month's rapid review up there if you want to see it. And then down here is what YouTube thinks you'll like. It's hopefully. probably a good video. It's great. It's the best video. And subscribe while you're at it. Please Indeed. join us. Stick with us. We always have new videos coming out. And uh, thank you. Thank you, bye.